I don't get it. I've been training my chest for months and these pecs aren't getting any bigger. We're gonna give you six exercises that you can use to increase the size and strength of your pecs and we're gonna start right now. The pecs respond really well to fast twitch movements. Think about a pad bench, explosive push-ups. Because of the fact that there's more fast twitch muscle fibers inside of the pecs, that's what leads to that greater size, greater strength. Not only does fast action movements lead to greater size and greater strength of your pecs, but also your pecs can percolate from a large amount of hypertrophic rep ranges. So let's say you can do incline flies for sets of 12 to 17 reps, or even if you're just doing push-ups, 20 to 25 reps, push-ups with a band, dumbbell bench with a band behind your back. These are all great hypertrophic movements that can lead to that long, term pec gains. Like fraternal twins, dizygotic twins, like my twins, Seneca and Keenan, the pecs and tries go together perfectly. So if we have big tries and big pecs, we're gonna see massive growth. But what muscles actually make up the chest? So let's look at pec major, okay? Pec major is gonna make up our entire chest for the most part. There is pec minor, and that's sort of underneath our pecs. It actually drapes down a bit. Now, looking at pec major, we're gonna see the clavicular head up top. So in bro terms, this is really the head of the pecs that we're training when we're doing like an incline bench and we're just feeling that pressing up at the top. Okay, that also might be where you feel a little bit banged up if you land weird on your shoulder. Sometimes that can lead to a little bit of a bruising in that upper pec that you can then feel when you're doing some type of vertical pressing. Now, the sternocostal head, okay? So this is gonna be more on the inside here, right by your sternum. Okay, this is where we're gonna feel when we're doing those dumbbell banded bench presses, okay, at the top, you're gonna feel that a bit more in here. Even if we're doing flies and we squeeze those flies together, that's where we're gonna develop that specific head. So you can sort of identify, based off of pec major, what each movement's going to do when we're training. But we have to understand the actual actions that the pecs are also responsible for. But what does the chest actually do for us? So we can even see flexion of the humerus, okay? So raising the humerus here, almost like you're pitching a softball, okay? That's gonna be flexion of the humerus, controlled mostly by the pec, okay? We can even see extension, okay? So that's almost more like throwing a baseball. That's gonna be a little bit more of the pec as well, okay, from the top coming down. And these movements or actions can be a little bit confusing because there's a lot of other things at play. Another aspect, we wanna see abduction, okay? So abduction would be here, raising the humerus like this, and then adduction, adding that humerus to your body would be coming down this way. So when we're looking at the joint, there's a lot of different factors that comes into play. And then when we're doing pressing movements like dips, benches, even dumbbell incline press. We have to see how the humerus is moving in regards to our torso to really understand what's happening from an anatomy perspective. If you want your pecs to look nice and swole, make sure you enter our free t-shirt giveaway. If you comment down below, you subscribe to the channel and you have all of your notifications available and you show up to Tuesdays Live at 9 a.m. Eastern, you could potentially win this free t-shirt giveaway. Now let's actually get those pecs nice and swole. Have you ever shocked your pecs? Okay, so we're on upper body power day. Make sure that we do our entire full warm up. The first thing that I want to do is to shock my pecs and what that means, okay? If we wanna really build strength and hypertrophy is we need to do something explosive. We need to train some elasticity. We need to stimulate some high threshold motor units through blast impulse work. And remember, I just said we were all warmed up. We're fully warmed up. Now the first exercise that we can do is a depth drop push-up. It's gonna look something like this. Okay, we're here, okay? Remember I mentioned about the tries and the pecs going hand in hand together. If your triceps are stronger, your pecs will have a larger load on different movements. Think about the bench press. If my triceps have a great lockout, my pecs will be stimulated more at the bottom. And it's similar here. We gotta think about the tries and the pecs working together. So depth drop like this, boom, okay? And then we wanna sit here, explode back up. Pause, up. And then as you warm up and you start to feel pretty good and you wanna shock them, you're here, boom, boom. 
but that force absorption, that elasticity is gonna lead to greater power output. And you don't wanna get too fatigued from this. Let's say we do four sets of five, right? If we hit four sets of five, that's gonna prep us for the rest of this workout where we can really start to use heavier loads with more time under tension. That leads to greater mechanical tension, which will in turn lead to greater growth of our pecs. We need lots of volume. So we started with that shock method, right? So we started to really trigger that blast impulse. The next thing that I wanna do, and I'm already feeling that sternocostal head right here from those depth drop push-ups. The next thing I wanna do is start to focus on timed eccentrics. Okay, so if I get set here and I go one, two, three, four, up fast, okay? One, two, three, four, up fast. And when we try to drive up, I wanna feel the drive come from my freaking armpit. Okay, right where that tendon is. Try and stay nice and tight, nice and tight. Boom. And while you're doing that, you wanna hug the bench with your shoulder blades. Hug the bench with your shoulder blades. Boom, one more. Getting a nice pump already. So that's gonna train that sustained impulse. That's going to train, even on that controlled position at the bottom, a little bit of that blast impulse. This is gonna help coming faster off the chest. It's gonna help increase that time under tension. And it's gonna help just keeping in the groove. A lot of kids and a lot of athletes as they're growing up, they struggle with finding the groove. Slow eccentrics, will actually teach you where that bar needs to be based off of your own body type. And then over time, your bench will start to have better technique, which in turn will lead to better performance. I would do this as 2A on that upper body power day, and you could do, let's say, five sets of three with a four to six second slow eccentric. Okay, so this next exercise is gonna mix it up like DJ Premier. Now, it's going to be a very unique movement that a lot of you probably have never done. And this is something that we do with a lot of our football players, something that we do with a lot of our wrestlers, and we do this all of the time with our discus throwers, okay? And what we wanna see is trying to really lengthen the pec as much as possible, get a quick action in to the body, so we're gonna see a little bit of that adduction, and then we're gonna press, okay? So it's actually gonna be a fly with a slow eccentric that's controlled, bring it in and press. And one thing we've got to keep in mind, I'm going to demonstrate this shortly, is that on the eccentric portion of a lift, we're probably going to be able to handle about 110 to 120% more than on the concentric. And I'm thinking about that through the lens of doing flies. But one thing to keep in mind is you've got to work through the sets, warm up properly, and make sure that your pecs are feeling good. This would be an exercise that you would typically do around like 3A or maybe even 4A if we're trying to finish and just blow up those pecs, get a lot of blood flow. So we want to get set, okay? I'm going to have my dumbbells up here. I want to bend my elbows slightly, get wide, okay? Squeezing hard through my upper back. Come in, press. Come in from the pec, press. Come in from the pec, press. Try and feel that one in your armpit, but two in that sternocostal head right at the center of our sternum. That's where we want to feel that pull. Boom, oh, there it is. And we can go one, two, three, four, in, up, okay? in up so this is a great way to use tempo training a little bit of that deceleration and, and the reason why i like to use this for different sports is one discus you can think about where that humerus is in relation to the torso okay but also football players if they get caught where a shoulder gets hit here that pec can get stretched really rapidly so we need to make sure that we're strong through that full range also a lot of kids struggle with that upper back and just going nice and controlled and really focusing on that and cueing them to bring it in from the pec here, then puts that dumbbell in position for the press and it can actually lead to an improvement in their bench press. Now I just said that last movement would blow up my bench. If I wanna have big pecs, that should be my whole goal. I wanna have a huge bench. So how do I get that intense volume to blow up my bench? So we need to remember the physiological adaptations that we're looking for first, the myofibular hypertrophy that we're looking for is gonna be triggered by, let's say four sets of three or four sets of four of a specific exercise. If we're looking for some sarcoplasmic hypertrophy, that's gonna to lead to that more time under tension. That might be achieved through drop sets, let's say two or three extra sets of 12 to 17 reps. 
but we've got to train in those specific rep ranges based off of our specific goals of specific hypertrophy. That's a lot of specifics. So one exercise that we use inside of our app, Peak Strength, is the close grip bench. And we know that the close grip bench can lead to a really, really great development of our pecs. Ironically, a lot of people think it's just triceps. But remember back to that fraternal twins discussion. Okay, and if we can look at the extension of our humerus here in relation to our pecs or relation to our torso, that's gonna lengthen the pecs quite a bit. And inside of our app Peak Strength, if you don't like to do close grip bench, you can even change that close grip bench with an exercise replacement to another alternative. And I'm gonna show you a sweet variation of the close grip bench right now. So that variation of the close grip bench, which is still a close grip bench, is going to be done with a little bit of a double bounce. So I'm using our fat bar here on our sweet ZKC calibrated plates. Click the link down below in the description. I'm gonna take this off, okay? I wanna get down, get a little double bounce. One, up, okay? That stretch shortening cycle leads to greater high threshold motor unit recruitment. Two more. I'm starting to feel it in my pecs big time. Oh yeah. So what we wanna do is if we're training that myofibular hypertrophy, I'm gonna do a one and a quarter close grip bench for again, let's say four triples. And then I might take out that one and a quarter rep, that double bounce, okay? I might take that out and do two sets of 17 unbroken. And one of the big factors too is that I actually don't like to lock out, although I can't even lock out because of my right elbow. Even at the top though, that creates more time under tension and that's where I wanna feel the pec squeezing the sternum while my upper back is squeezing the bench. This is a really, really important concept. Squeeze the bench here, squeeze the pecs at the top, and that's gonna lead to more activation, which in turn will lead to greater size. So inside of our app Peak Strength, typically we're gonna do close grip one and a quarter bench press on hypertrophy day. That's gonna be day five. We really just wanna focus on that general hypertrophy, that general size of our upper body, typically. And if you guys wanna pick up Peak Strength, you can head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, and you can download Peak Strength for five, free workouts. The worst thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna get five free workouts and you can cancel at any time, but at some point, you guys have to begin your journey to attain peak strength. Now, let's get to the next exercise. Do you know what enervation means? How about innervation? Well, enervation means pre-fatigue. Okay, so we wanna look at muscular enervation when we're leading to our next series of exercises. So muscular enervation is a way to pre-fatigue a muscle that might be lagging. So if we have an issue with an area, I, and I like to think specifically with pecs, a lot of baseball players have really, really poor mechanics around their pecs because they throw all of the time, okay, overhand. So if we can actually develop that action, we're gonna see a little bit better functionality from their pecs, and that's where enervation comes into play. Now, depending on the time of year, there's a fine line of when you can and cannot use enervation. So one way that we love to use it is by doing an incline fly. Okay, so this is like an isolation movement here, and I want this nice big stretch. Holy crap. Boom, come through, okay? Squeeze at the top. Come through. Really think about length and length and length and, and think about actually controlling from the pec. Control the humerus from the pec. So we can isolate here and I'm really squeezing. Okay, let's say you do 10 to 12 reps, focusing on just the pecs as much as you possibly can. That mind muscle action matters. That's gonna fatigue us and it's gonna lead to the next sweet exercise. Oh, now, we just fatigued, had that muscle enervation, and now, one thing I wanna factor is what was that grip, or what was the head that we were focusing on? Okay, so the head that we were focusing on was more of the sternocostal head. Here, we're on the incline, so we did incline cable flies, right? Now we're gonna get into incline bench, and there's a couple different ways that we can do this. We can go neutral, but I believe when we hit that neutral position, that's still gonna be more of the sternocostal head, okay? Which we just hit. I actually wanna rotate my hands just slightly out here, okay? And that's gonna be more of my clavicular head. So we're gonna get a little bit of fatigue in that sternocostal area, 
And then we can follow that up with a whole bunch of reps to target that clavicular head, which will lead to more upper pec development. So you can do 10 to 12 on the cable flies, come over here, rep out 10 to 12, and blow up your pecs. Ooh, ooh, that feels good. Oh. My sister used to make fun of this one dude named Scooter that went to our high school and he would flex his pecs all the time, and now I feel like that guy. What's one more thing that you can do Okay, to lead to more tension in your pecs. And that is actually bringing in tension. So when we're training with dumbbells, that forces a little bit more stability, okay, which can in turn also lead to more tension. But another really unique thing that you can do is use bands, okay? And we showed you a couple different push-up variations in the beginning with a band, and that can just increase that tension on a push-up. But another really, really cool way that you can do this is to actually use a band for dips. And most of the time when we're doing dips, it's typically going to be more about the triceps. And our dip rack is usually a little bit unstable. And we got to find that sweet spot on the floor. It's a little better. On the floor, this is what actually having a gym and training athletes, you actually have to do this stuff. And now we want to focus on outside of just pec minor, which is really, you can do a really cool dip variation here to blow up pec minor, okay? Try and really focus on that shoulder work. John Meadows has a great video on actually training the pec minor with that dip variation. He does a little bit better than me, obviously. But the one cool part now is doing dips with a band, okay? So we're gonna get set here. Of course, our power elastics available at garagesank.com. We wanna come down, just stay right at the top with minimal lockout, okay? Oh, oh my God. And you get a nice stretch here, okay? Nice stretch, nice stretch, come back up. Nice stretch, come back up. Nice stretch, come back up. And the way that I like to do that is I might do four, five, six sets real heavy. Try to push to say 200 pounds on a dip belt. Okay, you hit a triple, you hit a set of five, and you're doing traditional dips. Then you can follow that up with crazy drop set. Two to three sets, 20 to 30 reps with the band. Crazy amounts of tension, crazy amounts of blood flow, and that leads to growing your pecs, not only with size, but also with strength, because if we can get them to lock out a little bit more on the dips, that's gonna transfer really well to the bench, cable flies, the dumbbell bench, and in turn, you're gonna fill out that Abercrombie & Fitch youth small shirt that you go out on in Friday nights. So make sure you use all of these exercises, not only to prime yourself like that depth drop push up and use the shock method, but also using slow eccentrics and muscle innervation. Over a long period of time, you're gonna lead to greater strength development. And you can just use this video, cycle back to those movements, cycle forward, go back, go forward and look at the dips with the bands. Use all of these movements, or you can just head over to peakstrength.app, the Google Play Store, the Apple iOS Store, you can download Peak Strength, and you can follow a periodized program that we lay out specific to your needs and your goals. Because at some point, guys, you need to start your journey to attain peak strength. Because remember, freaks, if you guys want to become a champion, you've always got to cultivate your power. Peace.